Hey there, internet. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually get a WordPress self-hosted site up and running for free using services like OpenShift Online. So let's go ahead and walk through that process here. I'm already logged in here, as you can see, but you can go ahead and create yourself a free account and you'll get right over to this page after you've logged in. This page shows a list of all of the applications we have running for a bit of background. OpenShift Online uses this concept of gears to represent the applications. They give you a total of three gears with a free account and those each one of those gears can be used to drive an application. I've already got two of those running here. That's why you see this two of three here and you can see them both here. So let's get right to creating a new WordPress application on one of those gears. We'll just go to the add application button here. And this page you'll see brings you to a list of all of the different types of applications you can run here. Uh, Python, PHP, Ruby, all these different frameworks utilizing those different platforms too. In this case, we'll go right to the instant app section and we'll go down here to WordPress. Let's go ahead and click on that. And here are the options for setting up a WordPress site. For a little bit more background, when you very first create an account with OpenShift, and when you go to create an application, it'll ask you for a domain that will be preceded by a dash that will be used for each of your application names. In this particular case, um, let's go ahead and name this, for instance, WP, and it will automatically append this dash you got stuck after it and this will basically be the domain name you can actually change the name if you already have a fully qualified domain name from any uh, domain name service i'll talk about that a bit later but that's the basic uh, domain setup here we'll go right past all of these other initial items they're just there if you'd like to actually tweak them but uh, we'll go right with all of the defaults here and go down to create an application you can see it takes a while to actually create an application. I'm going to skip past a little bit of this so you can actually get right to the cut of it. And here we go. The application is already set up. You've got options to help you get started or you can go ahead and continue on. I'm just going to go ahead and continue on real quick. And this is more detailed information about this site that we just created. Here's the URL right here. This is the information for the database itself if we want to go ahead and access that. And you also have an option way down here to add PHP My Admin. I'm going to go ahead and add that in this video because that'll actually help with further videos. I'm going to go ahead and add a cartridge here. This will take a moment to install just like the other part. And just to explain a little bit, PHP My Admin is a visual interface that makes it much easier to interact with your database. All right, and there we go. Everything's all set up with PHP My Admin. We've got even the we've got the username and password for that set up right here. I'm not concerned about these because I'll be deleting this as soon as this video is done with, and uh, we can access the site right from here. So right from the start your WordPress site that you create through here is publicly available. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create this in English. You can see this is just going through the regular WordPress installation process. Let's uh, call this awesome. And uh, admin, you're never supposed to create a WordPress site with the username admin because that's the first thing everybody tries to guess. And especially, you're not supposed to use 1-1 one, one as a password, but we will do that. And uh, let's go with admin at, at gmail.com. Uh, let's not make this publicly available, and we'll go ahead and install WordPress. Once that's set up, we'll go ahead and log in. Admin 1, whoops. Yeah. Let me just get back here. 1-1, one, one, log in. And there we go, our brand new WordPress site. Let's go to the front end. And there we are, a basic WordPress site. Uh, actually, just, let's just highlight one thing real quick here. You can go to the dashboard and you can go to the plugins menu. 
And from here, you can see you've already got some basic stuff set up as, as usual in WordPress. And you can go to add new here and you can add any of the plugins from the WordPress repository right through here. Same thing with themes. You can go to themes and add new themes. You can add premium themes and plugins. And mind you, this is entirely for free. There is no cost for any of this stuff. The only thing is there are certain limits to a free account in this particular case. Uh, we've got, uh, what is it, 512 megabytes of RAM available through here, which is totally sufficient for smaller websites. But as soon as you, your website starts getting a lot more traffic and a lot more weight behind the, uh, behind the site itself, when you have more plugins and whatnot installed, you're going to want more uh, memory behind it. But this is totally sufficient for lower cost sites. Well, it's totally free, uh, totally efficient for a free site. And uh, it allows you to run any of the plugins that are available for WordPress. In my case, I actually use it for a lot of open source coding for creating and testing out different open source projects. So basically, that's it. That's how to get a website up and running totally for free using WordPress and OpenShift Online. I've got some more follow-up videos. Hopefully, you'll find this helpful. Feel free to ask any questions and take care.